I want to show you in a few quick steps how to use some of the new features in Photoshop CS5 to take somebody like this kid right here and cut him out, fill in the background where he used to be, and then distort his leg, the ball, and a couple things out there to make it look a little bit more like you wanted to. So we're going to use a combination of things here, including selections, we're going to use Puppet Warp, and we're going to use Content Aware Fill. So once again, Photoshop CS5 and later. So with them selected out here, or rather with the image open out here, I'm going to go to my quick select tool and I'm going to change the brush size here. Now we can use control option, drag right and left to change that if we want to. And if we drag up and down, you'll see we can change the hardness. Now if you're on Windows, that's Mac, if you're on Windows, I believe it's either control right click, drag right or left, or control alt right click, drag right or left up and down. I can't remember, and I really apologize for that. But you can also change your brush size right up here or using the bracket keys. I'm going to go out and make a quick selection. So just click and drag through. I'll make sure I get. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that if I had more time with this, I would spend more time. But I'm kind of in a hurry here, and I just want to show you a cool this cool little tip here. Kind of do something like this. So what I would do using my selection tools, I'd probably go in and do a little bit better selection than I'm about to do right here. Whoops, I don't want to do that. So I'm just kind of moving around. And don't forget, with this tool, you'll see a plus. All I'm doing is clicking and dragging. If you want to get rid of a selection or part of the selection, you can hold down the Alt key on Windows or Option on Mac. You can kind of, you know, address some of that that you want to get rid of. That's eh, not too bad. And I'll go grab the arm, let's say, and I'm using my keyboard shortcuts here to kind of zoom in and out quickly. So sorry about that. Move around. I'll grab his shoulder. Move the neck here. Get rid of that. I'm getting a little too crazy right now. I'm just trying to show you the technique here. You can try and refine your selection as much as you want. And I'm just going to say that's good. I'll grab the ball, and you'll see this is a horrible photograph, by the way. <laughs> it's just horrendous. Anyway, I literally pulled it off of something like iStock Photo just to show you this. But it's something I do a lot. Okay, made a selection. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy them. So quick way to make a copy of the selected content and put it on a new layer is press Command-J on Mac, Control-J on Windows, and if you look down here in the layers, you'll see that I made a copy of just him. Now I can go refine him and, you know, mask things out, do what I want to. We could have also made a mask and all that sort of thing, but I'm just going to make a quick copy. Now I want to get the selection back from him. So what I'm going to do is I, I didn't have to deselect the last step, but to get the selection back, I can Command or Control on Windows, click on the thumbnail to get the selection back. I'm going to hide him now, this layer. And make sure the background layer is selected. And I want to keep it a background layer that's basically locked because the content aware fill works that way. And if you don't have a layer that's locked like this, you need to have it be a background layer in order to delete and have content aware fill that in with the surrounding area. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But when we do this, when we delete and have content aware fill in the area, you want to make sure that the selection is further away from the object that you're replacing. That way you can kind of look around and grab the area around. So with the selection, I'll come up to Select, Modify, and expand it a bit and go maybe like four or so. You can try a couple different steps here, a couple different you know, options. I'll click OK. There we go. Now make sure the layer is locked. Now, not just locked, but you want to go up to Layer New and make sure it says Layer from Background, and it's a background locked layer. Mine is. So I'm just going to press Delete right now. Literally just hit Delete. You'll see Fill. You could also go up to Edit, Fill, choose Content Aware, click OK, and then I'll deselect. And you'll see it doesn't do a bad job. I might have to go in and do some fixing up here with the hair, that sort of thing, but not bad. And this is also a crappy image. It's a 72 PPI image. So anyway, I'll go back and turn the boy on. There we go. Now we're going to Puppet Warp. So if we go to Edit. You gotta make sure that the layer you want is selected. Mine is not selected right now, so I'm gonna make sure that the boy is selected over there, layer one. And you'll probably be better at naming your layers than I am. I'm gonna go to Edit, Puppet Warp. You'll see that we can set, let's say that we have um, part of the image, there's transparency between two parts here, and we have like the ball right there. Well, let me zoom in. I can just click on the ball to set a pin, and you can just move this stuff around, which is kind of neat. And then I'll come down to the leg down here, and typically what you wind up doing is setting pins where the joints are. So like the knee, you know, the hip, that sort of thing. I don't know, I'm guessing where his knee is. but And then we go and set points on all the different joints. That's only really if you want to move this stuff. You don't have to set all of these. 
I'll go up and kind of set one on his head, let's say. Now what I can do is come and click on a point and just drag it and go where I want to go. You can also shift click between points to select multiple and you can tell because there's a little dot in the middle. You can kind of drag two or more. There we go. What's really cool about this, let me move the ball over a little bit. I'll click on that pin and drag it over. I say, okay, we're gonna let him punt it. I'll zoom out. Now you can take these little pins and select them. Whoops. And you can also rotate them. So make sure I'm careful there. Go up top, you're gonna see rotate. Now if you choose up here in the control panel, fixed, and then select the value here, click on the value to select it. And what I typically do here is you can either scrub across, you see I just saw the scrubber hand, I could click, drag left and right, or you can use your arrow keys up and down. And if you notice what it's doing down here, it's actually rotating the foot, the ankle right there. And if you use your shift key, hold on the shift key with that value up there selected, use your down arrow and your up arrow and you can rotate it a little bit faster. It's not too bad. I'll click on his wrist right here. And you, not all images are gonna allow you to do this. Some images are gonna look like crap, but I'll go to fixed, select the value. You can either scrub back and forth, left and right rather, or you can use, let's say, your shift key and your arrows, and I'll kind of move his wrist there. You can try different things. You really have to, to be careful. Um, and I think that looks pretty good, not too bad. All right, I'm gonna press enter return. And we've got ourselves a kid that's kicking a ball a little bit different. Now you will see there's a couple little fixes out here I may need to do, but that's pretty easy stuff to do. So anyway, I just wanted to show you a quick tip using a bunch of these new features in CS5 to kind of get everything together and move the boy around.